I get my top seven most outdated guru techniques that need to stop in 2023. And the reason I do it is because I've been doing wholesaling for over 20 years. And I'm going to tell you the stuff being taught now that really everything works to a point, like everything. But the reality is I'm just going to run through the ones that I strongly feel you're 100% wasting your time. And it's not just my personal opinion. I talk to people all over the country and then I talk to people actually do wholesaling because if you just talk to gurus, everything works. Everything's like phenomenal. I'm, I'm going to make you a, a gazillionaire. But the reality is you actually have to put the programs through the work. And so the idea is try to save you, you guys from a hassle. There's no order of these. I'm just going to rip through them. So the first one, dude, the 70% rule, you guys know that's like, out. I was struggling with that in 2005. So if everybody bought on the 70% rule, it would like, you're very militant in how you buy. The reality is you buy when you can make money. The only factor that I put into it is I look at the seller and make sure I'm doing what they want and make sure I'm transparent. And then number two, I if my risk is minimized, if I can make a thousand dollars and everybody's okay with it and I have zero risk, go for it. I don't care. Actually, my first few deals were very, very small two to three thousand dollar wins because I didn't know what I was doing. But like, who cares if you make a thousand, three thousand or five thousand on your first deal and you minimized your risk. And honestly, you maybe paid a hundred bucks out of your pocket. Dude, that's a 10 times return on your money. And if you can just do it once, you can figure out how to master it with freewholesaling.com. Work with me and Zach. And I'm here to tell you the 70% rule, guys, just throw it out the window. Here's the 70% rule. If you can buy a property 70 cents on the dollar and minus off the repairs or doesn't need repairs, you will make a killing. End of story. That's all you need to know about the 70% rule. But sometimes you got to buy it at 68%. Sometimes it's 76%. Hell, I bought them as high as 93%. If I am going to make money and minimize my risk, what do I care about the 70%? So I would love to tell you like there's a hard set rule in wholesaling. It, it, if you use the 70% rule, you probably won't do a deal this year. That's just now once you get really good at talking to people, eventually you will be buying deals a lot in the 70% range, but nobody ever starts out just go, I'm going to get every deal at 70%. So on average, most wholesale deals are probably closer to 76 to 79%. If I had to take a thousand transactions. So if I did 70% and this guy's buying at 74 behind me, he or she's going to crush me. And that's what's like, everyone's figured out how to do it. So, and a lot of times you can get a buyer to pay more. Who cares? So throw the 70% out. It doesn't work. <laughs> Number two, stop trying to be like perfect and stop trying to fake it till you make it. I, I was always bothered with the fake it till you make it. it. It just makes no sense. Just enjoy the journey. You don't know anything when you start. And so if you're excited about it and you're enthusiastic about it, there's so much more you can do. But so many gurus teach you to like put on a jacket, wear these polished tennis shoes, like wear a hat. Like here's what you have to understand. You can't be Rick. You can't be Zach. You can't be Tony Robbins. Can't, just go be yourself. And once I learned how to be myself and be authentic, I didn't have to worry about how to fake it or lie to people. And once you understand that, it's extremely empowering because everybody knows when you're fake. You guys know when it's fake. Honestly, if you met me on the street, which a lot of you guys eventually will, I'm the same guy in front of camera. There is, I can't tell you how many people I meet on camera and then I meet them off camera. I'm like, well, you seem a lot different when you're on camera. I'm just here to tell you, if you are not going to be your true authentic self, you, people are going to see through you and you're going to struggle and you're going to have to keep up this persona. If it's not really you, then you're going to get imposter syndrome, which is the guru's primary thing to teach you to be someone you're not. Listen, when you get in wholesaling, you're going to change who you are. Like, well, Rick, the problem in wholesaling is because I don't like where I've been. Well, that's fine, but you still bring your family in every element. You're going to metamorphosize into a deal killer in wholesaling. Why? Because you're going to change what you allow in your life. And long as you're in true, authentic self, you're helping people out. This business is actually a lot of fun when you're fake and you just put on that fake smile and stuff. People know. I know right off the bat when people are fake to me. That's why I do not hang around a lot of gurus. Like it's just, it's all fake. Like everything's just perfect in guru world. I've never seen anything bad, but you can't ask any questions. You can't do this. So guys, be your authentic self. God made us all unique and different for a reason because we would be bored if we were all the same. So I don't want you to be me. I don't need you to be this guy or that girl. Just be you and find out what your skill set is. If you're funny, then great. Use it. People need to laugh more in this world. But And if you don't know the answer, just come back and get them the right answer. So I'm not even going to spend a lot of time on this one. Novations have been around forever. It's just a replacement of contract. But 
gurus teaching newbies how to do this more advanced strategy and how to pe how to put in a dummy contract and then replace it with this one and re then record legal affidavits that if it doesn't work out, you have to unwind or you're going to be sued for defamation of title. It's a horrible strategy and that's why you're hearing less and less about novations. They're very challenging. Now, I do a few each year, but I do it at a necessity. Like we can't make the price work. This doesn't work. I have someone that can buy it. Here's the deal. We're going to make X amount of money if I bring them in. If you're okay with it, I replace with my contract. If not, I understand it. The difference is I write a real contract to make it stick. Most novation courses are teaching you to write fake contracts. And by definition of fraud, writing a fake contract is, is tricking people into getting into an agreement. Uh, this is my opinion on novations. I just, you cannot explain this to a newbie. It's too advanced of a skill. So if you're trying to do novations because you're frustrated with wholesaling, I promise you novations will give you a whole new level of it. Next one, treating your cash buyers like trash. This went around on the internet for the longest time and I always said it was wrong. And most people that were still in business that had this business model, they're not in business anymore because they were literally told just to run your cash buyers over there a dime a dozen. I'm here to tell you in today's age, you actually have to work with your cash buyers and develop relationships with them. I used to be laughed at because I take my cash buyers to dinner, we go get coffee. I just got to know people. Now, you don't want to get them to know so much that like you're every week and you're doing something together, but there has to be good information and there has to be trust built up. The more you do it, the, the better you're going to be. I've been doing this 20 years. I have a dozen cash buyers always in my Rolodex will buy 90% of what I sell. So even during lean times, I always have cash buyers. How did I do that? I just spent time with them. I got to know them. I didn't let them take advantage of me. And a lot of times we had friction on pricing, but everybody was always happy at the end. So when people taught you how to like, if you commit to a cash buyer, honor your agreement. Just because a guy or gal offers you a thousand, three thousand dollars more, it's just in me, it's not worth the relationship. So you've got to know how to treat your cash buyers because treating them like, I'm not even going to use the words that were out there, but like treating them like trash. It's just, these are people, they're freaking humans. Why would we treat someone like that? You don't have to be mean in wholesaling. You go to Gary V way. Gary V is an extremely accomplished businessman and he's just nice to everybody. You can be a very successful person, business person and be nice to people. You don't have to be a pain in the, <laughs> pain in the butt type of deal. Okay. So, uh, perfect comps guys, th this is like this MAO thing. I've already taught you. It's one of the worst techniques you can figure. If you're trying to figure out what your MAO on every property going in, the reality of what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a yes on the first try and like basic negotiating one-on-one is you, you guys want to go for the yes on the first offer. And I've guys, I've been taught this in wholesaling every time I ran my business like this almost five years. And I'm telling you it's wrong. So, so many of you try to predict what your sellers want. And I'm here, you don't have any idea what they want. They have, you have no idea what they want. And I used to go, I know he wants 175,000. So I'm going to make an offer at 170. And I'm here to tell you after doing this 20 years, I never know. My salespeople never know. So how do you do it? You build up a massive amount of report that we teach over freewholesaling.com. And then when it comes to negotiation, when you come to make the offer, you're going to use the go for no method. And it simply states is is you want a rejection on your first offer so you can explore and find out what the reaction to your seller is and get a counter offer so you can start the negotiation. The problem with an MAO theory is if you start there, where are you going to go if it doesn't work? You're done. So negotiations got to start naturally. The easiest way to start a negotiation is the go for no. And I teach you plenty of methods at freewholesaling.com. I know it's uncomfortable, guys. Dude, I've been doing this 20 years. You don't have to tell me. I don't like friction with people either. Nobody naturally wants to like get in like battles with people, but it is part of the process and you have to make it fun and engaging. And the problem is if the house is worth 200 and you're trying to buy at 175, 180 at your max and you come in at like 172, you are done. There is no negotiation. You are basically playing ML MLS realtor rules. So the go for no method is basically if it's worth 200 and I, I said, listen, what if I could get you $110,000 cash? And I just shut up. And then I'm usually going to get 
get a violent reaction from the seller. Like, listen, I can't take anything less than 150. Okay. So we're somewhere between 110 and 150. Now I've made negotiation. Now I have a boundary and all I need to do is massage it and work it and keep trial closing it. But if you go in at 175 and they reject your offer, what are you going to do? And that's how most of you do it. Stop trying to get a yes on the first try. You want to get a no. And when you get a no, now you started a real negotiation because, and a lot of you, you all offer too much off the bat. I get it. You want a yes. You don't want to get rejected. I'm here to tell you it goes the opposite way. So what, here's how I learned this technique. You ready for this? I used to handicap myself. So if I wanted to make a $150,000 offer, I would minus 30 grand off of it right off the bat. So I would go 120. And that way I mentally tripped myself up. So I didn't overpay for the properties. And after you overpay for like four or five properties, you'll get the hit real quick because it's really hard to unwind and you waste a lot of time doing it. So understand, I always call it the LAO, but uh, it's kind of funny. Don't start with your MAO guys. There's nowhere to go. Number six, it's a controversial one. Teaching newbies how to wholesale on the MLS, it should almost be outlawed. I'm sorry, man. Like you were dealing with realtors and the reason it's taught is because it seems easy in theory, right? You got your phone number, you got your ask price, you have everything in front of you. The reality is super easy up front. It is a complete nightmare on the background. If you don't believe me, fish around. I'm not saying you can't wholesale on the MLS. I'm just saying starting out as a newbie, it is a very tough strategy. And the reason you guys hear about it because it sells courses. End of story. It's going to sell a course. It actually, it sounds perfect in theory, but I'm just telling you, I rarely, I buy on market properties only for specific properties. I need to complete a portfolio or a deal. I never go hunting on the MLS. Now, the only time I did was in 2009 because it was amazing, but I've yet to see any duplication of that. We're all waiting for some sort of drop, but I'm just telling you, like I, like we're kind of past it in Florida. Like it's still, we still have issues, but it's still not there. But I'm just telling you, MLS wholesaling guys, go for it. Like try it out. Let me, give me some feedback on it because you now are renting into realtor world and it's a whole new set of rules. And by the way, doing an assignment on an MLS deal is very, very difficult. And most courses and most gurus that teach it, they teach you how to lie and manipulate to the seller, the buyer and the agent. And the problem is it's going to catch up to you. These are professionals. And honestly, they don't want to be in a wholesaling transaction if they don't know they're going to be in it. And I promise you, if they don't know it, by the time you get to closing, I guarantee they'll know it. So you want to watch out for this. Just like, just let bad deals go, guys. This is not a time that you should be doing bad. If the numbers don't work and you've used all the techniques at freehealthline.com, move on. The only thing that can fix a bad deal is time and circumstance, which you and me don't control. So all you can do is put them up in your follow-up and see what happens with it. So I'm just telling you, when the deal doesn't work, don't try to sit and spend four hours on the comps. Guys, 10 minutes max on a comp. If you spend more than that, you're trying to force a deal to work. Why? You probably took some sort of guru course and that's going to be your check and balance if you got a deal or not. If you got a deal and you can't make money off of it, it's not a deal. So guys, do not force bad deals. How I know when you're forcing bad deals is when you're spending way too much time on it and you're digging deep into the comp. And if you're doing any of those two factors, I want you to step back and go, am I going to make any money doing this? So all real estate transactions and wholesaling have two parts. You're either going to get a deal and make money or you're going to get a lesson. You want an outcome. If you do nothing, you get zero. You don't get either one. You actually just destroy your self-confidence and you don't know what to do. And you guys got to understand going into it. So that is my run through of the seven most outdated wholesaling techniques. Honestly, I could do it all day long.